Welcome back to Anderton's TV. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, this morning, in the middle of the night. Who knows? Um, today's video is another deep dive into the difference that it oh, makes God. if you change the speaker in your guitar amplifier. Yes. Last year, we did an uber popular and unbelievably long and painful video <laughs> where we changed the speaker oh, man, in a Boss time, Katana about 10 times yeah. and tried to compare it and decide what we liked. Yeah. Today we are doing the same thing, but now with probably the best selling valve amplifier in Fender's history, or certainly one of them over the last 20 odd years. Yeah. Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of you will have uh, bought Fender Blues Juniors. Yeah, it's been out for ages, hasn't long, it? Long, long time. It's a yeah. great little amplifier, a little 15 watt single channel, um, one by 12, all valve combo. Mm-hmm. Um, the standard, the black sort of standard vinyl covering has actually had uh, various different speakers in it over the years, um, from Eminence to uh, Jensen to currently Celestian A-Type, um, and the limited edition variants, yeah, it, which been have been very popular, them, yeah, yeah. have had a whole heap of other speakers <laughs> in them as well. Uriah Heap. Um, so, for this demonstraciono, uh, we've got a Tweed Blues Junior loaded with a Jensen C12N, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. which is the sort of, or was the speaker of choice for Fender during that sort of classic 60s blackface era. Mm -hmm. um, it was the first of a new generation of ceramic magnet uh, speakers as Alnico magnets became too expensive to use in speakers. Anyway, mm -hmm. so that's got the, the C12N in it. Yep. The black one is the one that we're going to change the speaker in as we go through so that yep. we'll always be referencing it back to this one. Um, we're starting the black one with the Celestian A-Type, mm -hmm. which is the stock cu currently the sort of the stock speaker that you would get in it mm -hmm. anyway. It is... Uh, quite a departure for, for Celestian from perhaps some of the speakers that are more synonymous with their um, relationships with Marshall and Vox and all that kind of stuff. Yep. It's very much trying to be an American sounding, Vintage you know, whether vibe. it's a eminence yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. vibe. So we'll try that one first. Yep. Pete has had his soldering iron out. So actually what we're doing Ooh. here is we're only ever using the amp in the tweed one. Yeah. And we're simply driving the speaker in this cabinet uh, by switching yeah. this box. So it's always this amp, but it might be the speaker over here or the speaker in here. Yeah. So you get the same, the same, you know, tubes and everything or valves going yeah. through both. Uh, and of course the dimensions of the cabinet have an impact. So uh, whether the cabinet's on the floor or not has an impact. So we've tried to replicate everything so that there's, there's no, no other reason for this to sound different other than the speaker. Yeah, same microphone, same place. Everything's the same. We've done loops, so again, even Pete won't be playing differently through each one. We've got we've got a clean loop with a telly, a clean loop with a Les Paul, and a dirty loop with a Les Paul. Dirty loop. Dirty loops. Yeah. Good but band. Be, but before we go ahead and do anything else, please like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and please use the timestamps if you want to uh, see, I want that speaker, what does that sound like? Click, you know. And also, we only got five here, but because there's, there's, there's hundreds of different speakers, and we are not, if in case you go, where's the Alnico gold and all that stuff? If you're looking down and going, where are those? They don't fit in the back of this. So yes. That's why we haven't done that. The cone on the back. It's kind of big. a shame. Like the, yeah, so here's the, here's <coughs> what yeah, a I'm normal a big fan speaker. Of the Alnico magnets, so these are the, like, the really vintage yeah, stuff the expensive that you might one, get in yeah. a, a Vox AC30 or something. Yeah. The magnets at least double, yeah. isn't it? Maybe even a bit more than that on the back. Yeah. And yeah, the, the actual, um, the way the Blues Gene has been designed, uh, there's not enough room. Let's start so the So we loop. start? Yeah, so let's hear first and foremost, a clean, clean Telecaster. Um, speaker number one, if you can see the green light, I don't know if you can on the camera, that's this amp. If you see the red light, that's that. And here's the loop from the looper I played earlier. Here's one I made earlier.
I mean, there's not much in it, but I think <clears throat> this this to me has got a slightly sort of crispier mid range, yeah, and a bit less bottom end. This yeah. one has a slightly rounder bottom end and a sort of smoother mid range. Uh, I would almost say it's very when I play um, old Fender amplifiers yeah. rather than new Fender amplifiers. Mm -hmm. So what I mean is, if you play a Deluxe Reverb versus a Hot Rod Deluxe, yeah. The deluxe reverb is a spikier, kind of brighter. Yeah. It's got a bit crispy more, top end. Yeah, the paper is going like you can hear yeah. the paper going. It's and, like... and the hot rod deluxe is more forgiving. You know, yeah. it's like it's a slightly. You know, so yeah. I almost feel that's your. You know, again, they're 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 kind of like ninety percent the same yeah. sound. But anyway, it might be worth mentioning as well that the speakers are all new, so none of them has been burnt in or whatever. This is true. So you know, you could if you use these for. Yeah. I don't know. And do you know the other thing is they're all available to buy from Anderson oh, as well. Oh, links below. Yeah. Uh, and then I, you're again, dive on over to the <laughs> website to see exactly how much these are, but they're all round about the 100 to 150 pound yeah, mark for yeah. speakers. It's interesting. So it's actually a, the, you know, part of the reason we do this is, is it's one of the more affordable mods that you can do to an amp like yeah. this. It's easy to change the speaker. Four screws takes 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah it's pretty it straightforward to do. And this comes with the little clips on, so it's um, quite easy. You don't have to... Okay, so let's much. hear now this, another loop. Yeah, so this is now pole, with Pete's with Les Paul, pole, but yeah. still clean. So okay, starting so here. Here we go. go. It's almost like that had more mid range now than that one. That had made more low end with the less pole. Oh god, it's, it's uh, hey. just letting you know again. Reminder <coughs> about the timestamps. The last section of this video is just going to be us knitting together back to back with no talking. Every single speaker change as we go through it. So if you're struggling to remember what each one sounds like, that bit will all come at the end. Yeah. I should also tell you as well all the knobs on the. Um, well, this is how they're set. So if you're familiar with the Blues Junior, volume's at five, so about a third of the way up. Treble, bass, and middle are all exactly halfway. Master is at um, three, so again, that's about a quarter of the way up, and reverb the same, sort of yeah. a, about three or four. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could... I this... don't know, I actually think I, I think I prefer this one with the telly loop and this one with the Les Paul I, I think, loop. I think so too, uh, yeah. I think it's so too. The, because, the, because I think the telly is naturally darker, Yeah. Um, that extra crispiness is... Yeah, yeah. yeah right, let's right. hear, let's hear right. the... So this There's final it. loop is a Les Paul with Pete's Dane overdrive yeah. pedal on it. There you go. prefer that one with the Les Paul and yeah. that one with the telly. Yeah, isn't that weird? All that right, well, weird, look, isn't it? So that's the Celestian A-Type. Um, if, if you really, really like that and you've got a Blues Junior, the chances are if you look in the back of it and you've bought it within the last three or four years, that is the speaker that's in it anyway. Yeah. If, you've, if your Blues Junior is older than that, I think I said this at the beginning, it's probably got an eminent speaker in it, yeah. which we don't have as part of our sort of setup today. Right. Uh, should we try now another speaker? Oh, the good one. Okay, yeah, yes, so yes, 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 yes. the speakers that you're going to hear today now are going to be the Craneback, Pete and mine kind of favourite Celestian oh speaker. Oh my God! This one. Classic lead. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, heavy. that's, that's a heavy um, guy. What do you call that? That's like a left field a choice here. I'm not sure yeah. that I've ever seen uh, one of those in, in, in a Blues Junior. We've got a, a Vintage 30, probably Celestian's most iconic speaker. Yeah. Very synonymous with British amplifiers. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure occasionally used in limited edition um, Blues Juniors. And then the last one... I'm really one, interested in this next one here, the last one. Yeah. 
uh, the hemp back. Yeah. Uh, look at that. Hemp of course, we've got a, a, the sort of <laughs> highly recognisable uh, bit of herb there. Um, and this is one where look instead of using a paper cone, this is a this is made of hemp. So. So yeah, if it breaks, you, you can smoke don't it. like it, you just smoke it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you know, I think that sounds like a terribly dad thing to say, isn't it? I'm Absolutely. Not, I'm not but that's sure what we are, can smoke it? hemp, so. but there we are. Anyway. Right. Uh, we will. Do you want to? Do you want to speed it up? View of watching Pete change the speaker. No. No. Come okay. On, we'll cut just that do bit it. out then. So we'll click our fingers, and magically that will be the speaker. Let's go in straight away. I, I, I will just say as well. Um, we're not going deep into the specs of each speaker. The full specs are all on the Anderson's website or the mm -hmm. Celestian website. Yeah. Um, and but what I can tell you is the uh, technical director at Celestian recommended these yes. speakers. Yeah. So uh, they are all uh, uh, completely compatible with the Blues Junior. Yeah. Um, you will you will need to Sorry. buy the uh, the eight ohm variants of them for a blues junior yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so let's do that clean loop clean again loop, clean loop with the telly mm -hmm. It's almost quieter. One of the specifications that you'll find uh, on any uh, speaker listing is its sensitivity. Um, it's normally um, written down as a decibel rating in a scientific kind of test. So what one watt put through the speaker measured at one meter away mm. by an accurate decibel meter gives a, a speaker sensitivity. And the more sensitive the speaker, the louder. Yeah, it's like a Volk speaker. It is absolutely yeah, yeah. yes. So, so the more sensitive the speaker, uh, the more likely they are to cancel you if you say something uh, bad about them. No, the more the more if sensitive, you play a bad lick the, into the it. more sensitive the speaker, uh, the the louder, uh, the more volume it will produce effectively with the same signal going into it. Um, wow. It's really important to to factor that in because, of course, anybody that just thinks the wattage of the amplifier is uh, indicative as to whether it'll be loud or yeah, quiet, yeah, yeah. You, you know, isn't taking into account um, the the sensitivity of the speaker, how many speakers, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So anyway, absolutely. Um, Can I just play a little bit? Yes, just, of I know you we may. didn't do it on the other one, but I just feel like. I needed the amp to be louder because the speaker was slightly less sensitive. <laughs> I can, of course, just turn it up. <gasps> but for this particular experiment, we're not adjusting. Yeah. You know, we're leaving all the EQ flat mm -hmm. and the volume where it is. Mm -hmm. So right, let's, let's go. Other... Uh, so let's have the Les Paul. Yes, here you go. If you're wondering why Pete and I are doing this, um, oh, man. next time you're playing your guitar amplifier, just see how massively different it sounds Walk around sitting it like kind of, you know, quite far off to the side of it yeah. versus right in front of it. Yeah. So yeah, the only it's uh, that's how we're trying to get a, a true sense. Well, look, it sounds similar, same kind of vibe again. Okay, final loop for this one then yeah. is now the driven Les Paul. <laughs> I 
I need I need to try this with the gain. Do it. Uh, just to see, because. I think I prefer this sound right. uh, of all. I rather like the sort of the the, the raspiness of the yeah, it's got uh, a raspy. Fender because I think that's synonymous with what I'm expecting an old tweed Fender to sound like. I think if the if the amp was naturally maybe even more spiky, which often other things like Marshalls are, yeah. you definitely want the cream back to yeah. sort of perhaps take a bit of that off. But anyway, look, yeah. thank you very much. Now we will change that. What do you fancy next? Do you want oh, to hear a vintage 30? Should we save the hemp back till last? Yes, let's do that. Okay, we do so the heavy one? Oh, give me, yeah, let's do the heavy one, whilst yeah. I've still got some energy <laughs> to lift it. Why is that so heavy? Oh, because it's 80 watts of pure deliciousness. Mm. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, here we go again with now uh, the classic lead 80 in the, uh, in the, the Black Blues Junior. I don't think it was similar. I think it was it was less. This this had now less bass in and more mid range. Yeah. Than the but that's because ones. maybe that's what it's made for. It makes sense yeah. that it's a lead classic sort of type lead. classic lead type thing. Next one, Les Paul yeah. clean. It's definitely got the mid-range characteristic is more like the Jensen, I think. Can I just quickly try just with a bit of... the last loop yeah okay here we go Thing. It's the least basic one yet. Can I say something you really say. stupid? Yeah. That makes that amp sound more British. Yeah. And that may sound yeah, you're right. more American. You're right. It's like a maybe a stupid observation, but it kind well, of That's not a stupid observation. It that's, kind of makes me feel makes like sense. that's got some sense of a more martially tone now, maybe. I don't know. A lot of this is psychosomatic, as you Psychosomatic. Know. Interesting, um, though. It's the least toppy and bassy yet, I yeah, think. Yeah. So it's great for lead, like it says on the tin. Could do. Yeah. So, uh, two more speakers to go. Yes. Shall we, um, Let's go get... Vintage 30, okay. man. Let's go. Let's go. 
uh, here we go. We, it's our penultimate speaker. Uh, this, as I said at the beginning of the video, probably the most famous Celestian speaker of all, the Vintage 30. Mm -hmm. So please, Pete, mm -hmm. let's have the clean telly loop through the um, Jensen first. I think it has an overall more sound like the like the Elite 80 or the Lead classic Lead. It's that sort of yeah, mid-rangey thing. I was expecting that to have a lot less bass end because I know in the past when I, I think this goes from when I it has a lot less bass end, doesn't it? I thought it has a lot less bass end than that. I didn't think it did. Really? I, I just let's try it with the next loop. Okay. It has less, much less bass end and top end. It's much more mid rangey like the, like that lead, 80 lead, classic lead or whatever. Let's try it with some distortion. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Different. It's, it's very different. It's so more mid range. Let me just try. I just want to play the guitar with a with a with the gain on. You see the application for this speaker and that speaker. I'm being fancy, the same application. I would say if you're at home and you're sitting at home, what you want is more bass end and top end because you're not playing loud and you're not mm -hmm. trying to compete with anything. But these speakers, in my opinion, suits much more live scenario because what you want is to have bass here and kick drum and you want snare, uh, all this stuff here, and then you want to be in the middle as the mm -hmm. guitar player. Wouldn't you but also... It, depending on what gig you're playing, of course. Yeah, and I... And I, I would still prefer that. And the guy out front would mix some of it mm. off, but on the stage, I would have that bit more of a... Uh, it doesn't, as well, if you've got a closed back cabinet rather than an open back closed cabinet, back mounting. Doesn't, that, <laughs> does, doesn't that sort of change again the tonality in a way that perhaps pushes the sound forward a bit more? And I thought it gave it a bit more bass end. These are the more lead. prone to be in closed back cabs, right? Yeah. 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 Well, right, well, look, well it's a, that's a, that's it, man. Oh, Tomewood, there is only yeah. Tomewood. There's no right or wrong. Oh my gosh. There's no problems. There's only uh, solutions. Let's smoke some hemp. <laughs> <laughs> all my clothes um, are hemp, by the way. So I'm just going around licking they? myself all the time. This is this is the um, signature guitar speaker of the uh, main songwriter in Spandau Ballet. Yeah. Gary Hemp. <laughs> <laughs> This is it, well done for getting to the end. Oh, this yes. is our last one of the hemp, and don't forget, uh, the very end of the video will be all uh, yeah. six speakers or whatever, back to back. And don't forget to like and subscribe as Ooh. well, hit the notification bell, please. Right, here we go, clean jam with a Telecaster.
Man, it's difficult to say, isn't it? It's difficult to say. It's still, it's still like a more mid rangey kind of thing. Maybe the hemp speaker is aimed at the guys with none, a little bit none of None of the Celestians have thing. got the, the, the rasp on the top. No, the, which, the uh, which I got. like. Yeah. I like it doesn't have that paper so you like really, it's, that swilliness. You, right, because I, I like, kind of feel, for me, the raspiness is, I've said this already, haven't it's I? It's vintage feeling. I, yeah. I feel it's kind of what I yeah. expect. I but, don't personally um, like that very much. Let's move right. on. Yes, yeah, let's, let's pull on. clean. Let's pull clean. I like the hemp. Yeah, I like it that's closer th together. Let's put some gain on it. Let's yeah. see what happens. Yeah. Let me just try again. Let's go and I mean, they listen. sound different. They sound different. We, yeah. What we'll do now is we're going to go and just do the audio where we put everything back to back and then we'll come back into the room and finish up with our hopefully useful conclusion. But of course, make your own. Anyway, back in a mo.
Okay, Pete and I uh, and the crew here have just gone and listened back. Yeah. Uh, through uh, some amazing speakers. I, I should say, actually, we're, we're using Genelec uh, 8030s for all of our kind of editing team and Genelec 8040s in here. Mm. Sound amazeballs. Yeah, so yeah. my first thing is, the first thing that, that we probably need to say on there is rec- the speakers sound maybe slightly more different in the room than they have done on, on playback when we've recorded them. Yeah. And I think if you're going to really hear the nuances here uh, 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 between these speakers there's absolutely no point listening to this on your phone no like, you have you, to put headphones, to go in. headphones or some decent speakers so just running through them I, I think the general sense is that the the jensen in every comparison has a, a, a sound a characteristic to it that is uh, intrinsically fendery you know it's got that kind of vintage raspy the top end like shrillness yes. like paper tearing kind of yes. vibe when sizzle it's, whatever you want to call that and i almost feel it's one of those i'm not a fan yeah i was just about to say that it's one of those very subjective like some people you know there is that crispiness to offend a gain sound that isn't everyone's cup of tea and it sort yeah. of feels like it's it's intrinsic to that speaker um the the you can buy by the way i want one of the things that I probably didn't mention, although this video is really us showing off Celestian speakers, if you've got to the end of this video and gone, you know what, I've consistently preferred the Jensen in, in that, uh, links below to where you can go and buy that from. You can buy that from the Anderson's website. It's actually- um, Or you can buy the, you can buy the amp like it or, comes like yeah, that. You absolutely, know. if you want to. But the, Je- the Jensen speakers actually uh, is cheaper than the Celestian. All oh, right. So it's about 80 or 90 quid or something like that. Anyway. But the amp is more expensive when it's got it in it. Yeah, work that one out. Anyway, okay, so these are our notes. And maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't. We've got the A type, we probably thought was the most similar. We've got here very similar, slightly less treble. These yeah. are the notes. The cream back, we had more bassy, softer, clean, clearer, not cleaner, sorry, clearer. Yeah. That, I think you ended up going, that was your favorite, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. The lead 80, we felt sounded like it had the the, the biggest mid hump in there. Uh, good gain, really good on the gain yeah. sound. Uh, the V30, again, was another one I've just written down here. We felt it was very similar sounding to the Jensen again, yeah. which And very si- similar sounding to the lead as um, well. The, and then the hemp came out as basically si- very similar clean sound, but a really good gain sound. Yeah. So. I think we're probably, in terms of favourites, leaning between either staying with the Jensen for that authentic fendery thing, or looking at a cream back or the hemp. I, I think overall, I think what the Jensen has is it's got low end and top. Well, I, when, when I mentioned it earlier, being mm-hmm. in your bedroom at home playing, it's got all of that stuff. But if you start pushing it, it it's not, in my opinion, it's not great. It starts faffing out a bit in low end and maybe the top end gets mm-hmm. too uh, fender you know like the old yeah, sort yeah. of you know yeah. which some people like yeah. and it's it's a you have but you have to old play to amps, it they're spiky amps you have to they? play to it right mm. and I think if you're a lead kind of player I mean all the clean sounds are so similar mm. in my opinion they're very very similar it's only a little bit more top end and low end in, in some of them but as soon as you go sticking gain into them I think if you want that mid rangey thing the V30 and the, uh, the 80 is the ones to go for but if you want an overall the two overall I think is the is the A type or the, the, the you know the, the cream back you like the A type still well like, not, I like, not, not I like, like the I mean the, the I hemp, like the hemp and too. the cream back yeah yeah, so I, I, maybe the hemp, but I, I just feel like I know the, vin, the, the, the you know, the, the cream mm. back, and you can get that in the 75 watts where you get more low end into yes, it. Yes, yeah. So, yeah. and I think it just takes the gain slightly better in a way. Yeah. Well, I don't look, know, I'm not familiar are. with the others, but they... So, uh, yeah. Yeah, listen back to it, like, over and over and over again. There's Comment no below thing, on what there? you think. Yeah. Uh, but thank you very much to Celestian for generously yeah, se- yeah. Uh, sending us some, some speakers to try. Uh, and thank you very much to you guys for, for listening. So and comment below if you want us to try to do you some other, other speakers amp? or there, another amp you want us to shoot out. That or we do this if, we, if this video can get 5,000 likes, <laughs> that would be a... Okay, well, there we go. Thank you very much for watching. See you later.